Welcome back to What the Theory with your man Joel. I'm Joel and today I'm going to be talking about time. And I'll start with, um, I guess you guys have read or watched Peter Pan. And well, as, as a kid, when I was watching Peter Pan, and I'm sure for most of us, we thought that Peter was the hero. Like he got Wendy out of her home, took her to meet the Lost Boys, the boys live forever, you think happy thoughts, and when you think happy thoughts, you can fly, you can defy the laws of uh, gravity, and you never age. And Captain Hook was this evil guy who was, for some reason, trying to get Peter and the Lost Boys, and was hounded by an alligator that had swallowed a, a clock, and he kept hearing that ticking sound of the clock, and he knew the alligator was nearby. And that was the same alligator that when Peter cut off uh, Captain Hook's hand, it swallowed. Now that's just the synopsis of the story. But I was thinking about it in light of what those things mean. And I suppose Peter Pan is a symbol or a metaphor for defying time, uh, for staying uh, young and happy and being a child and being whimsical. And in my life, I, I'm, as you can tell, I'm quite old. The edge is coming in nicely. And as you're getting older, uh, the conversations I have with people in my life are more and more around how much um, things are different in adulthood than we thought they were going to be when we were kids. And there's almost this ambition to hold on to youth, uh, not just in the way we appear, but in the way we relate to life. Um, I mean, even Jesus says, you know, look to the children to see how you're supposed to be. And there's this feeling that you lose something when you no longer a child and in the story of uh, Peter Pan I think the lesson there is that by losing the ability to pause time when you're a child um, everything seems fun uh, you're living in the moment you're able to have flights of fancy shall we say and there's something that time eventually robs of you and I think that's what Captain Hook uh, symbolizes now in this theory this is my theory now, and I think it's also all over Reddit, is that the lost boy is actually being held captive by Peter Pan. So he doesn't want them to grow up. He doesn't want them to change. He wants everything to remain the same. He's trying to control time and trying to control how everyone um, perceives themselves to be just remaining children. And that Captain Hook um, actually escaped. He was one of the lost boys that tried to escape and started growing older. But in his battle with Peter, Peter cut his hand off and when he fed it to the alligator, it was almost like a symbol of um, he lost something. I mean, Hook uh, sacrificed something when he lost his youth. And the very fact that when you become an adult, time is always coming for you. It has a piece of him. It, it, it ate his hand and it's coming for more. And time will destroy him um, piece by piece until he's eventually uh, no longer in existence. And that being an adult, he sort of represents um, seriousness and responsibility and all of those things. And he's fighting against uh, youthful whimsy. And that's, you know, basically the reading I've always had of, um, of that book. And I think as you grow older, you start to realize Captain Hook's <laughs> dilemma of being chased by time. And um, maybe let's do an experiment. Wherever you're sitting now, uh, how many devices are telling you the time? Like right now, I have my watch, I have uh, my laptop telling me the time, and I have my phone. There's a constant reminder um, of where I'm meant to be, of what I'm supposed to be doing, of how I'm supposed to be doing it, and it's a way for me to communicate to other people that these are my priorities. I give you this amount of time. Um, and I think while that's, I guess, modernity, the, the definition of modernity is how we manage time. A modern place is one that packages it, that has the 12 hour clock, um, that knows this is the time to work, this is the time to be home, this is time to eat, time to rest. And I always thought that that's what's measured by a clock, that that's the time. But I'm starting to get to the point where that's just a version of time. Um, for instance, uh, I've, I've been spending time with uh, kids uh, quite a bit, uh, my relatives, you know have a lot of kids, they are breeding mob. And when, when I hang out with those kids, there's something different. Um, you, you, you tell someone who's nine years old that you get them something next week, you might as well have told them that they'll get it next year. 
Like it's such a big amount of time for them. Whereas for me, weeks go by, I've been spoken to a friend, and it feels like a few days have just gone by. And um, I guess when we think of time as a commodity, we think it's imperishable. We think it's almost all the same. Everyone has the same 24 hours. But practically we don't. Um, if you're in a relationship, for instance, if you're giving someone the first few hours of your day, and maybe you're giving them the late hours of your day after you've um, sold your time to someone else, <laughs> to someone who pays you, there's a difference. Uh, there's a difference in how you are, there's a difference in your mood, your temperature, and what you bring uh, to the conversation. And I think there is something that we've gained, especially us who um, live in, in Uganda and in East Africa and in Africa in general. There's, I think, this collision between how we perceive of tradition, how we perceive of uh, modernity and time. Uh, when I'm in the village, for instance, there is an irritation I have that things are moving slowly. There is um, a sort of need for me to conserve time and to live efficiently. And now, uh, I won't say that that hasn't given me some rewards. Uh, I'm that annoying person, you tell me that I'm supposed to be somewhere at one, I'll try really hard to be there at one. And then when everyone else is not there at one, I get upset. But the more I meditate on that, the more I realize that, yeah, it's functional, but I, I don't think that there is any favor I'm doing myself by being overly indexed on time. And sometimes it makes sense to just let that go. Um, I remember when I would stay with my grandparents, they would never measure time in terms of it's lunchtime or it's dinner time or it's time to watch TV or things of that nature. It would just be, we eat when we're hungry. <laughs> we sleep when we're tired, but I have a regimented time. So when it hits nine, I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to be sleeping. And there is some benefit towards routinizing in that manner, but it also makes you more or less a slave to that. Um, in Gulliver's travels, I, I think when he was going to, I think when he was moving to Lilliput when he was on the, on the ship, he talks about meeting this man who had a, a pocket watch and he spoke of it as if it was a magical being, that it tells him when to sleep, it tells him when to wake, it tells him when to go, it tells him when he's late, it tells him when he's early. And from Gulliver's perspective, it was almost like, oh, is that a magical box that tells you <laughs> whenever everything is supposed to be happening? And I think that's the kind of um, life that we live in now. And especially if you're in a career, um, you can feel that you're either behind time you're not making as much as you're supposed to have made by this point in time. Um, if you're, I guess, wanting to have a family and uh, start a certain type of your life, as a certain time of your life, it can feel like you're always behind. I don't know about you, but I usually feel like I'm behind on most things. And that's because I have a certain measurement. But the measurement and the actual thing are different. So um, I like how in the Bible it says, for instance, that the Sabbath was created for man and not man for the Sabbath. And I guess that's the tiny difference and shift in mindset that I'm uh, trying to espouse. That the clock is meant to be useful to me, not me useful to the clock. I'm not a slave to it. Um, one of my fondest memories was uh, as a kid going to my dad's office and he was meant to have a meeting, I think that started, oh, I don't know, sometime in the morning, like say 10 a.m. And I had a burning question. To me, it felt like a burning question, but I just wanted to ask him, how they make rubbers. I'm talking about erasers, okay? Rubbers, I'm not that kind of kid. Uh, so <laughs> I wanted to ask him how they make rubbers. And for me, it was a burning thing. And so I rushed to him. He, I, he was walking into his meeting room and I remember asking him, hey, how do they make rubbers? And I could see that he was sort of, like immediately I asked the question, I could see that he didn't have time to answer that. And uh, I suppose he gave me this look like we we're going to talk about it later. And perhaps that was the rational thing to do, but for me, I felt like, well, something more important has to take his time right now. But if he'd taken the moment to like, you know, sort of uh, explain to me, I don't know, in fact, I'm saying it now, I don't think I can explain someone how rubber is gotten out of a tree and vulcanized and made into something that you can utilize and throw at that girl who's been disturbing you in class. It's, there's something, that memory, that moment has passed. There was a moment where I could have felt very important to him. And so I think about that sometimes with the people in my life um, 
who I try to schedule. I try to fit into the stuff that I'm doing that's so important. And um, I can be beholden to the calendar. But every once in a while, you know, it's important to say, fuck it, break the calendar and do something wild. It's important on like a, a random Tuesday, if you can, to do something different, to break out of the norm. Only if to remind yourself that um, you don't serve time, time is meant to serve you. And it's moving all the time. It's, uh, the, the clock is always going to be ticking. That alligator is always going to be chasing us. It's going to haunt our every moment. Death stalks us at everything that we do. Human error stalks every decision or theory that we try to put forward. And there is a, a manner of living where you let that thought um, drive you, you let that thought sort of scare you. Um, but then there's also embracing it and understanding that you don't have control over nature. You don't have control over further time. Um, but what you have control over is what you can do with the little bit that you have. And I suppose moving from I have to to I want to is my, uh, is my message for today. Um, how much of your day can you say I want to do this and you're actually doing it versus I have to do that. For me, there's still a lot of I have to, but I'm hoping to make it more of I want to. So tell me what you think and uh, don't forget to subscribe quality content like this. Do you see do you see my shot? It's fantastic. You're going to be seeing a lot of it coming up. Alright, have a great day.